we're going to do a, a live and a, the Zoom. So speak up when you ask a question. And I'll try to repeat it to the people here. But let's just start off. Uh, anybody new here today? Oh, I see a friend of mine. Mat uh, what's his name? Matau or something from another, another freaking underground non-duality thing. Yeah, yes. nice. Hi, Paul, from Nothing FM. Yes, yes, you've come over to the winning side, finally. <laughs> we got Glenda and Linda and Mickey. Uh, we got Christian today. Nice to see you, Christian. Yeah. Robert, we got, uh, I can't see this. Arthur or something close to that. Uh, we got Mike, we got Joseph from France, Susan, M, Suzanne, yes. Sony, hey, welcome everybody. So today, uh, Jim, let me know if the sound isn't good and stuff. Oh, there's uh, Sarah. She's got another name now. She's got a, <laughs> she's got something before it. I can't see it. <laughs> Sarah, nice to see you, Sarah. So listen, I wanted to read something today from one of my old favorites, a couple things, uh, from Huang Po. So Huang Po was, I think he was around the 1200s, supposedly. He was a, master, a Zen master from China, which is quite different Zen than Japanese style. Yeah? Yeah, quite different. I think it was called Chan or something. Yes. It was. So Hoang Po goes, when people hear the mind teaching, like now, yeah? When people hear the mind, the big M mind teaching, they get excited. They think there is something to be got. They then fervently engage in this or that practice, thinking that they will get something. Unfortunately, they do not see that their own mind and the thing they expect to find are one and the same. Yeah? At least entertain that possibility, because that's the whole key of non-duality. If you're thinking that you're inherently solid and I was going to get something called non-duality, that's, that's like the, uh, the mistake that gets echoed over and over again. And see, when it's corrected, there was no need to correct it because it never really happened. We are just assuming it's so, yes? So he goes here, again. When people hear the mind teaching, they get excited. They think there is something to be got. And of course, that which is thinking there's something to be got is not you, thank God, yeah? That's the message here, is there's going to be a thinking to get something, but it's not you thinking to get something, see? We're beholden to thought. So when the thought goes, you're fucked, we start looking around. Yeah, I'm fucked. And start making calls, get, go to therapists and stuff like that, yeah? But no, it's stating something, and then there's a believing in it, and then we take it to be so, yeah? So the way I would change this was, would, would be when people hear the mind teaching, and when the mental state hears the mind teaching. And when the mental state claims to be the hearing of the mind teaching, I'm sorry, Hoang Pei, I'm changing some stuff, they think there is something to be got. See, and this is what happens. If we believe we're doing this personally, then we get spiritual guilty when this gets pointed out. Fuck, I can't believe it. I made something out of nothing. No, you didn't make something out of nothing. It has nothing to do with you. It's a mental activity that's implying it's you. Yeah? So it's making an incredible, insane you know, statement, which is, I'm going to get something. There is something to be got. If you're waiting for that to stop, you're missing the whole point. You see it's not you. The activity is seen, but the not you doesn't get derived from it. Yeah, I mean, the you doesn't get derived from it. It's thrown into the category of not you. Yeah, so... When people hear the mind teaching, they get excited, they think there is something to be got. Now, in a way, this is beautiful because 
non-duality brings into stark contrast misunderstandings that in most practices or searches can hide in them, yeah? Because they don't get brought into stark contrast. This immediately gets brought into stark contrast because the mental state's first reaction is, what can I get from this? That's what it is. It's not your first reaction. Your first reaction has been awareness, and it's not a reaction. It's just a space. That's it, yeah? The reaction by the mental state is, I'm looking to get something out of this message, just like I'm looking to get something out of every store I fucking go into or whatever. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. To be clear, so it's not about, okay, we're now going to practice and surrender the desire to get something from it. It's not your desire. You're not beholden to that statement. We, we assume we're beholden to that statement because we've taken many, many statements just like it as being us, as being describing of us, yeah? So I'm trying to get out of this. No, you're not. That's the great news. Because if it is you trying to get out of it, then you've got to stop, yes? And this, this is the whole duality of spirituality. Uh-oh, I become aware that I'm really fucking up, so I'm going to start fu not fucking up, yeah? But there's a you in both those premises that you're not. Yeah. So, can you hear it there? All right. Yes, Paul. Yes. All right. So, they then fervently engage in this or that. Hopefully not. But the head will definitely want a fervent, you know, a fervently engagement. You know. So instead of watching one video and getting the invitation, you watch 14 hours of fucking videos. You stay up all night watching, waiting to get it. Yes? I've had people call me. They spent over a million dollars spiritually seeking. They yeah. have. I've been watching all night your videos. I said, fuck, that's fucking insane. That's insane. Get some sleep. They're going to be there. YouTube hasn't, this isn't going to disappear by 8 in the morning. So this or that. All right. So they then fervently engage with this or that practice. So in other words, it's basically say, it doesn't matter which practice, it's practice, this or that, yeah? They both have a certain quality if the mental state has claimed it, yes? And is looking to get something out of it, it doesn't matter what practice it is, yeah? So it doesn't, he's saying this or that, he's not even naming a specific practice, he said this or that practice, any of them, this can be, it's like a horse that that mental saddle is going to be put on, and then you're going to ride that fucking practice. Yeah? Or you're not. It is. Yeah? All right. That they will get something. Unfortunately, unfortunately, and now it doesn't seem like it. The setting isn't that great. We're in city. <laughs> but fortunately, everyone in this room and everyone in this Zoom, fortunately, is hearing this message. So... He says, unfortunately, they do not see that their own mind and the thing they expect to find are one and the same thing. We don't have that excuse, do we? We've had the great fortune to realize that what we're looking for and what we're using to look for it is one and the same. I hope. I mean, it's just, we've been sharing for freaking years. This is one of the basic premises. <laughs> <laughs> so in a way, I don't know, I feel like we have great fortune right now because we have heard this activity. We haven't heard everything from this activity. We have heard about this activity, this mental claiming and the assumption that it's talking as you and is describing you and is sharing and talking about your lack of attributes or your attributes, yes? All right, so fortunately, so we could change that, that thing. So fortunately, they see that their own mind and the thing they expect to find are one and the same. Let's have a positive spin to this. <laughs> one and the same thing. If you use your mind to try to get something from mind, you will never achieve anything ever, though you practice like this for billions of years. He uses the statement, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha with the same feeling. It's the same, he's just saying in a different way, yeah? So here he goes again. 
Here it is, just this right in front of you. Start thinking about it and you've just missed it. See? No, see, see there, the thinking in the, in the act of being identified as the thinker, the thinking of it separates you for a thousand years. But it's not the thinking, it's the idea you're the thinker. Yeah? If your hope in thinking is going to be different than it's appearing now, it's a fucking forget about it. You're going to be waiting a long time. But to take that, what's giving it all the meaning is the thinker. That's the assumption. It's saying there's thinking about this topic, but it's picturing it's you that's thinking about this topic. You as this figure. Yeah? You as this historical idea. Yeah? So here it is, just this, right in front of us. Start thinking about it, and you just missed it. All right, so here's another one, if you don't mind. Just give up your notions of unenlightened and enlightened, yeah? Or just give up the idea you have any notion. You're not the one who has the notions, yeah? Do you think that you brought enlightenment? Do you think that the meaning that has been brought to you by the word enlightenment, you brought that to you? Do you believe it came from the spirit and it delivered the pure living, fucking, always lit up, message no what has the head done with the word enlightenment it's caused more freaking suffering when the head claims the enlightenment it puts its own definition on it you've lost the freaking race and some other people won let's get on with it sign up for that six-month retreat yeah so just give up your notions of unenlightened and enlightened then you might recognize that which is here to begin with. Yeah, hopefully. That's the point. Yeah. It's your crazy thinking that is your biggest impediment. I would emphasize the word your. Yeah. It's not crazy thinking that's the impediment. It's your. It's the claiming of that crazy thinking to be yours, which is the greatest impediment. You hold on to all kinds of distorted ideas and compare one thing with another without end. Your thoughts furiously chase after all kinds of things, just like mad hornets stirred from their nests. There is no such thing. This is very beautiful to me. There is no such thing as illusion. Illusion is itself illusory. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful statement. It's only there because you have invented it. <laughs> and thank God it wasn't you that invented it. They used your construction material, but it isn't you that built it. Yeah. It is you. If you would simply give up your dividing this from that, you would see that what seems to be, to be divided is not. Yeah. So everything is appearing to be something, and then maybe everything is nothing. And so we don't realize we're moving towards the idea of nothing as something appearing to be something. What are you worried about stopping this and stopping that? This is the big enchilada. <laughs> you're, you're appearing to be something that's trying to stop other something. Yeah. Why not see you're not that? And maybe the thoughts won't have the power they used to have when you take the engine of your out of it. Yeah. It's an add on. It is. It wasn't there. You've had many, many thoughts that were never called yours, yeah? And when you were a kid and first thoughts were coming in, there was no sense that I'm doing this shit. It's sort of like the idea, who the hell thinks they're beating their heart? Makes no fucking sense, yeah? They know the heart's beating, the muscle's beating it. But then, that logic isn't applied to thinking. We believe we're thinking which is a much more subtle a process than beating a muscle, you know, drenched with blood, yeah? But we won't go, I'm beating my heart. Oh, give me a break, or I'm digesting my food. No, no, but when it comes to thinking, we're all behind the idea, I'm doing it, yeah? I don't talk about <laughs> my heart beating. I think I could be doing better. I did. It was sort of like when I was young, you know, 
my head started to get caught up and then I would be like, hey Ma, can you come into my room? I want to review my playing. I think Wayne was having more fun than I was. What's wrong? Something's wrong. You know, none of that shit was going on. I was playing, running around, doing whatever without much thought about it. Yeah? Yeah. And then my, my uh, career, <laughs> if I ever had one, house painting really didn't demand much thinking. It didn't. I was never surprised when I walked into a job much. There would be four walls, a ceiling, some trim. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to have 70,000 thoughts a day. What are those thoughts doing? They're reinforcing a freaking idea, yeah? Could you believe you were something if you, were only, if you only had an echo that you were once? Or would it be much easier to find yourself believing it if that echo was 70,000 times a day, yeah? Do you believe you could be convinced of something by claiming one feeling or having every feeling throughout the day claimed to be yours? It's a pretty incredible repetition of identification that's going on, yeah? Everything that's happening, there's a claiming that we're the one either doing it or being done to by it. Over and over again, I mean thousands of feelings. I'm going to have seemingly... Thousands of feelings are going to go through this event today. Each one of them that are noted are going to be used. It's almost like 50,000 donkeys, and then there's a tail put on each one of them. That tail is mine. Yeah? So the feeling gets claimed to be my feeling, and then you have a feeling of that mine. And then that feeling generates an image in your head, and you're pictured as a body. So you're not a body, you're the feeler. You're the thinker, the hearer, the taster, the toucher, the seer. All of that is pictured as the body. The body is supplementary. It's the doership. That's the bondage, yeah? So the thinker, the feeler, the seer, the taster, the toucher is pictured as a body. The body is given all those attributes. You're the doer, you're the thinker, you're the feeler, you're the actor, yeah? All day, all freaking day, as it says in the Course in Miracles, the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. Most of the information that's being collated through the action figure goes through the brain and gets directed to the body. You're taken to be a freaking body all day. Yeah? That's why it's saying, unfortunately, most people don't hear this. So now we have great fortune to hear it. There is an activity that places us, a, a you before us, which is the body identification is pictured before what we really are. Yeah? And then what we really are gets to become maybe a spiritual pursuit for some of us. And therefore, we end up using what we are to look for what we are, which is unbelievable. Or as Ramana Maharshi says, the greatest mystery is reality wanting to attain reality. How could that take off? Give me a breakdown of how that could happen. There must be an act of being identified as realities in the act of being identified as something other than reality to have any merit of looking for reality, if it is reality, yes? It has to have, it has to invent an illusory thing because no illusion, if there was one, could fool reality unless reality wanted to be fooled. Obviously, yeah. It's not going to be taken unless it wants to be taken. So obviously, it swallowed something. It's got caught in its time throat. It coughs up an 80-year life. But maybe in the 30s or 20s, it starts feeling sort of weird, looks around, and then you hear a message. Hey, Jesus Christ, that you you think you are is not that you you are because there is no you in the artness of what we are. Yeah, there's no thing. And like we shared the other day, the only reason why we have feelings is we're empty of feelings. The only reason why there's thinking because we're empty of thinking. The only reason why there's doing because there's emptiness of doing. Yeah, We're like the screen that, ha uh, that allows all the movies to appear. And what are the movies made of here? Feeling, seeing, thinking, shit, and all like that, yes? Time, all of that's 
paste it on the movie. But the screen is not of any of that. As, as Jesus Christ says, all right, you're in this movie, but you're not of this movie. You are of the screen. He didn't say that. There was no movies back there. But you're in this world, but you're not of this world. So, yeah, you're in this film, seemingly, but you're not of the film. Yeah. So if you take a sound back as far as you can go, what's hearing that sound is not a sound. It's not. It's emptiness. That's how you can hear the sound. You only hear notes because of the background of silence. If everything was notes, you wouldn't hear fucking anything. It would be a giant cacophony. But because of silence, as the context, you hear notes. Yeah? What are we? Are we content or context? If we're context, that's a weak motherfucking context. If it comes and goes, it maybe lasts for 80 years. <laughs> that's a weak context. Yeah? That seems more a description of something that would be content, yeah? Just like a cloud would be a content to the context of the sky. The cloud would show up, yeah? You, it looks like a dog, but three weeks from now, if it's still hanging out, it may not be a cloud. It keeps looking like a dog. Something's going on. So, but the sky allows all the clouds to appear in it, yeah? Because it's not of cloud. What's seeing, they've said it so many times, what's seeing can't be seen. Yeah. What's hearing cannot be heard. What's feeling cannot be felt. What's tasting cannot be tasted. What's touched cannot, what's touching cannot be touched. That's the beauty. We are empty. That's why there's all this fullness going on. If there was something else, there would be a conflict. There'd be some shit happening here and then all this shit. But there's no conflict because it's empty. There's nothing going on and then it allows everything to go on. Yeah. That's the only way everything could go on. If there was like competing everything's going on, <laughs> you wouldn't see shit. You'd just be completely overwhelmed. What? <laughs> but here... We're of emptiness, we're of screen. Therefore, a, a, an art project can appear on us, yeah? Yeah, all right, so I'm gonna give one more. This is another guy. I can't, I'm saying his name, Tao Hu, I don't know. T-A, let's just call him Herbert. All right, Herbert says, because it is so close, you don't notice it, obviously, yes? Why? Because we're driven, what we're taking ourselves to be is driven by time. It's not seeing shit, it's looking all day, yeah? The looking is, is determined by the sense of time in it, yeah? You're using seeing in time, and that's called looking. And so we're trying to use seeing appearing to us as looking to find seeing. Just lose interest in who's the looker and you'll realize the seeing. Yes? Yeah. All right, so because it is so close, you don't notice it. When you open your eyes, you see with it. Yeah, simple, eh? However, if you imagine you can find it by thinking about it, you just missed it by 10,000 miles. And then he has, everyone knows Chang Su. He was like the second dude in historical Taoism before, after Lao Tzu, then a guy came from, Chang Su came. So Chang Su says, knowledge is limited, but knowing is not. Very beautiful, right there. Knowledge, in AA we say self-knowledge avails you nothing. It's a very strange statement. Because you would think knowledge would be very valuable, but it's not saying knowledge is of not valuable. It says self-knowledge. In other words, knowledge claimed by self, what we're talking about is this small s, knowledge claimed by self avails us nothing because all it does is lead to reinforcing self. <laughs> but knowing, knowing is not. To try to understand the unlimited through the limit is craziness. Yeah, 
It used to blow my mind when I f was going to talks earlier. And what I had read is, this what we are implying is indescribable, incomprehensible, no ability to understand, and then people would try to describe it and have an understanding of it and try to, it's unbelievable. So knowledge is limited, but knowing is not. To try to understand the unlimited through the limit is craziness. But to do this and to consider it to be real understanding, well, that's just simply stupidity. I haven't said that. Herbert said that, so don't get mad at me. But I'm in, I concur with it completely. Yeah, knowledge is limited, but knowing it is n is not. Wow. So what are we of knowledge or of knowing? We're of knowing. Yes, we're of being. Yeah. If we want to be stuck with a name, it should. Everyone should have an ing at the end of the name. Pauling and Zing and Christing and Johnning. It would be much more an apt description of us, wouldn't it? This whole, without the ing. You can't even, what the fuck? You know, what the fuck is Chris? Like a story, you know, memory, but Chrising, yeah? Wow. So, knowledge is limited, but knowing is not. To try to understand the unlimited through the limit is craziness, all right? We're done with that, hopefully. Now it gets abusive, the next sentence. But to do this and to consider it to be real understanding, now that's just Stupidity. So, yeah, I'm really happy to see you folks. I hope, uh, I hope at least this one st sentence in the first statement I called, I, I spoke of was this, which is, I'll give you the one before, fervently engage in this or that practice, thinking that they will get something. Unfortunately, they do not see that their own mind and the thing they expect to find are one and the same thing. We are all under a great amount of fortune because we're not in that condition, are we? Yeah. Fortunately for us, we have seen that their, that their own mind and the thing they expect to find are one and the same thing. Or let's say one and the same. Let's not put thing in it, yeah? You know how, what a leg up, if we were a leg, you know, we have on everything with that knowledge, that knowing, yeah, that you suddenly, it's clear to you that you're using the Buddha, you're not, there's a using of the Buddha to seek the Buddha, not to reflect the Buddha, but to reflect the Paul, yeah. The mental state is using the Buddha to seek the Buddha to reflect the Paul, to superimpose a Paul on the image of Buddha, yeah? And like it says supposedly in the Bible, you know, we're made in God's image, but we're not. We're made in self's image, really, most of us. That's the God that's dominated here. We take ourselves to be a mental idea. We've somehow obtained attributes we have absolutely nothing to do with, like, being a seer, you tell me, how do you prepare to start seeing during the day? You don't, do you? Your eyes open up and there you go. Is there any thought or effort to get, to, all right, I'm in that pre-seeing stage. Yeah, don't fucking look at me. That throw me off. <laughs> all right. This is the first step you have to do before seeing. There's about eight more. <laughs> no, there's just seeing. Yeah? Did it take any time? Has it any, ever demonstrated any thought or effort? I haven't seen any. Yeah? Maybe the ear hurts, but that which is hearing doesn't. Yeah? The eyes may not be working well, but the seeing is beautiful. Yeah? But seeing. And I see just through observation. It doesn't demonstrate any thought or effort. The basis of my life doesn't demonstrate any thought or effort. I'm up. I'm seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting. I don't choose to. I'm seeing, hearing, feeling. Oh, I'm just going to choose, go with feeling today. No, so, you know, no. I don't have, I, there's five cards that get played every day. You know what I mean? There's no choice involved in it. I could take my eyes, maybe. 
but then you'd be seeing your eyelid. You would. You'd be seeing hitting the garage door. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so if you look at it, just on your own observation, does it demonstrate any thought or effort to be what it is? Then why would you think you would get there by thought and effort? How? How could you make sense out of that? How, you, how could you get that which is completely chilled out? How do you think you're going to arrive there and get there by super a lot of anxiety and fucking pushing and shoving? Yeah? It goes contrary to the nature. Yeah? Yeah, so. All right, I think that's it for the talk, yeah? All right. And we'll now have questions. Um, if you like. Paul, one of the participants wants to know the book, um, the reference that you were reading yeah, from. Just out of uh, Hoang Po, just look up Hoang Po, or uh, if they want, send me and I'll take pictures of it. I don't know the books. Okay. I read it in the back of a Cracker Jack <laughs> box. That was my prize, a little scroll. Flying Po, when I was eight, changed my whole mind. What? Can't you use the Buddha to seek the Buddha? Ma! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, if you want, I'll take a picture of it, but I don't know where it's from. Okay. The one that Hoang Po, the first one, he says that many ways. Yeah. The most, the, to me, the simplest way is you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use mind to seek mind. You can't use light to seek lights. If you do it for eons, nothing's going to happen. It sounds very familiar to the other statement. Yeah. So the whole point is, is that applicable? It's not like, oh, let me contemplate that. It's to apply it. Let it hit you and see, hey, that seems like a pretty damn good description of most of my behavior. Yeah at least in the terminology of spirituality, I've been using the Buddha to seek the Buddha, unbeknownst to me as the Buddha. <laughs> and the true compassion of the Buddha will not allow any of that to succeed because the value in those systems is to fail so that you're left with your own devices that are not, not of Buddha and you see they're not your own devices. So there's great compassion in the failing. There's great compassion that the door is never open, not even a crack, when you're knocking on the door as the Buddha trying to get to see the Buddha. It's beautiful. Yeah? That's true compassion. Because the way in is to real the way out is to realize you're not in. Yeah? Like, there's a great statement I love. I don't know if it's true or not, but there were some followers of Ramana Maharshi who had been there for a while, and they were talking amongst themselves about, do you think we are ready to teach, you know, or share the message? And then Ramana came in the room, so they decided to ask him. And he said, yes, you're all ready to do it, but I don't advise it. And they, he, they were a little, like, confused. They go, why? He says, compassion. They still didn't get it. So they go, well, what do you mean? He says, well, you'll be in, sitting in front of the group, and you'll feel compassion, and you'll dilute the message. Yes? You'll, want, you'll dilute the message so that it fits the imaginary person. Yeah? That's the end of it. The horses are out of the barn. You're not going to fucking catch them. Yeah, so. Yeah. I'm a total in agreement with that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the idea. Well, never mind. That's a, just an opinion. All right. Anybody have any questions? I'll try to repeat it. Can you hear me all right? Yep, um, yep, audio is clear. Oh, fucking on fire. Mm -hmm. If you were here, I would cut off your imaginary head. But first, mine. I want to go another thing, because these people I haven't seen in a while, they were like spiritual elitists. They didn't like Zoom, no Zoom. So now they're back. <laughs> so 
The next book we do, because the first video we ever did was the, the, the sheep and the lion, you know, the story about the lion and then the young lion who thinks it's been a sheep for a few years, confront, gets confronted by an old lion, the old lion drags it to the water hole and then puts both their heads out. The young lion sees the image of the old lion, gets that it's a lion. But we're, the next book is what happens after you leave the water hole. <laughs> that's, that's what we're going to concentrate on. Because a lot of us have had that event, maybe many times. But what happens when the lion, the young lion, leaves the water hole? And what happens when the old lion leaves the water hole? Two different things. Both may be occurring, but one gets traction in one, and the other doesn't have any traction. Yeah? The young lion walks away from the water hole, and the mental state claims to have had that event, yeah? And slips this identification over the lion, and now the lion is seeing it from the sheep's point of view. He now walks back to the sheep and tells them this incredible lion experience it had. I had a lion epiphany. Don't worry, I'm a sheep, but it was an incredible epiphany and stuff like that. So the important thing is not the parable about the reflection because we've already had that. Yeah? Everyone in these Zooms has seen in a weird way their original face somehow. What we need is what happens after we leave the water hole. Yeah, because as Jesus say, it's like a thief in the night. Yeah. If you don't see it, you're going to be looking from it. If you don't see this mental claiming, you're going to be looking from it. It's just that simple. Yeah. The one quality it can't get rid of is the awareness. It clouds it over. It distracts us. It's got us habitually assuming things, but when you see it in the light, it's not you. Yes? You see it as an activity. The self now has an ING also, and it's selfing. Yeah? And this selfing tells you what you're not. And that's how you find out what you are. The knowing of what you are is knowing what you're not. Yeah? That's the knowing of what you are in my field. So, yeah, that's going to be the next book. What happens after the lion leaves the water hole? <laughs> He's in Marin City. <laughs> I didn't want to pay any more money to remind myself, so I remind myself. <laughs> I've been to more meetings of Paul Hedeman than anyone else. <laughs> Recognizing the hardness of this nut. Yeah. It's constant, constant. Yeah. It broke through, finally. I definitely gave up getting anything, maybe about nine years ago. <laughs> I really thought there was something and nothing for a while. I did. Even though they kept saying nothing, no. There's something in there for me. No, there's nothing there for you. Not at all. Completely zilch. It won't help you when you want it to help you. It will help you unbelievably, but when you really want it to help you as what you're not, it won't. That's true compassion of the message. It won't be used as a tool to further the imaginary Paul. A lot of other shit will. But non-duality, I think, is pretty damn good about that, yeah? It just keeps negating, 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 negating. No, I want to use it. No, you're not that that wants to use it. Wow, it's beautiful, yeah? I don't think you have that many rugs on your imaginary floor to get pulled out from underneath you. You should have hit the hardness of the floor by now, yeah? Chop, chop. <laughs> so when I'm going to read it one more time because I love this part this is unbelievably very nice okay there is no such thing as illusion 
Now, this is just a, some supposedly a person saying this, you know. You have to find out, I guess, for yourself. There is no such thing as illusion. Illusion is itself illusory, yeah? It's only there because you have invented it. And thank God you're not the one who, vent, who invented it, yeah? Thank God. Thank God. It's like going to a park and there's 30 kids playing. Where does your attention go? To your kid, yeah? Probably. The same thing. You can see the invention of his illusion, but to see when it's held as your, there's usually a lot of denial around it, yeah? When there's a, because there's, a, a, there's something going on you're not knowing that's reinforcing the you that's milking or sucking the tit of the illusion, yeah? So, yeah? But when it's not yours, you'll see the invention of illusion. You'll see this is dreaming. You'll see it. You'll, you've heard tons of descriptions, and that one will probably land, at least for me, and be the end of describing it. It just fits it perfectly. This place is an event of seemingly so. It's appearing to be true or false, yeah? I seem to have a huge role because it seems to be appearing to be true or false to me in a way, yeah? So, uh, because the, in Buddhism, they would talk about the inherent emptiness of things. So their things are in things. They don't have any ability to affect you. They have to be given the ability to affect you by believing in them. So as mind, through our belief in them, that thing now can produce an effect on me. Yes, seemingly. It appears to be true. But is it? No. That's the great news. Yeah? Because if it was true, to make it not true, especially when self can't get out of self, we'd be completely fucked. We would. But the beautiful news is that <laughs> there's no need to get out of what you're not in. Yeah? If you believe you're in it, there'll be a lot of reasons why you should get out of it. But if you see you're not in it, yeah, there's no drive to get out of it, out of it. Like we used to say, how long does it take to escape an imaginary place? No time at all. What kind of equipment do I need? None. <laughs> Am I going to fail? Probably not. I'm not in it. <laughs> The failing to escape an imaginary place is success if you could read the fucking tea leaves. If you could see it and then start questioning the reality of what you're trying to get out of, instead of beating you once again with failure because I should, I should have been able to get out of it by now. That guy says he's out of it. What happened? No, you can't get out of what you're not in. That's it. Yeah. Oh, there's got to be a wiggle room. No, there isn't. Yeah? Non-duality doesn't apply on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and, you know, the last February 29th in a leap year. No, it's non-duality. It's a negation of duality, which is the everyday way this place is interpreted and deciphered, received, conveyed, yeah, lived under. We are living, breathing, eating it. We're not. This whole appearance is living, breathing, and eating duality. That's its whole nature, is to see this and that. How could you use this to arrive at one when you already are that imaginary idea of one? Yeah. Yeah. So, and all that happens, it brings about, with no intention at all, a traveling lighter as the imaginary Paul. Hallelujah. Yeah. Not by making an effort to travel lighter, but begrudgingly observe your traveling lighter. Because the head, if it can't own it, it's not that much interested in it. When it realizes it has nothing to do with something, it's like, fuck it, you know? But really, the betterment of Paul has nothing to do with the idea of Paul. It happened really against its wishes in a lot of ways. <laughs> Seriously. So, yeah. Any, any questions now?
No? Well, maybe we'll end soon. We'll have a, you can say you were at a live meeting. Uh, Paul, what? there's one. I have a question, Paul. <laughs> what? I have a question. Right. Can you uh, can you just talk a little bit about spiritual bypassing, just kind of like how you see it and how you see it? Well, you tell me how you see it. I hear it differently. Yes, tell me you. What are you saying? <laughs> What's your meaning of spiritual bypassing right now? So I I define that term as sort of using you know enlightenment or non duality as a sort of way to you know self improve or in the hopes of getting something out of it as you put it um and that's kind of that's kind of the broad definition that i see as spiritual bypassing is really just sort of trying to skip any psychological steps in terms of development of your character and who you are and just sort of saying if i become enlightened i'm so, i'm suddenly going to be you know this fucking jesus character ah uh, well that uh If you try that, there's going to be a big crash on Highway 95. <laughs> There'll be a lot of spiritual vehicles running into each other. Uh, I think we just went over the idea of whatever you're doing, the mental state is saying it's claimed it already. I'm not saying it produces the goods, but without you knowing it, it will produce the goods. Yeah. So... I thought spiritual bypassing was uh, people who've worked really hard to get somewhere don't want anyone to get there much easier. Yeah, so. I don't they, know, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so they're, like, they're believing that non-duality and stuff is a way of getting out of the heavy work and the heavy lifting of spiritual growth. That's what I thought it was. I'm totally into bypassing that. Yeah, totally, completely. Yeah. Let them drive, let them go. I just stay in the rest area. Yeah. In this case, but, but uh, I think we just explained how the head will come upon non-duality and try to take advantage of it. Whatever it comes upon, it'll try to take advantage of it. But because non-duality isn't gonna give much, if anything, that, that activity that may have been able to be hidden in other searches will be brought into a stark contrast where you'll really see, yeah? You'll see the mental state trying to claim non-duality to get an advantage. You'll see it, a living, vivid illumination. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's why we're pointing it out. We're, this whole path, we're, well, whatever, but we're showing is after the water hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you heard the message, now what? See what happens. See the mental reactions, because the, me the mental reactions are not based. There's no volitional or personal activity. It's a, ment it's a mechanical activity. And in a, weird, in a great way, and it's not AI. It's not like artificial intelligence and it's getting better at its claiming. It's just mechanical. When, there's, when we, as consciousness, or whatever you want to call it, bring the mental state into contact with something, it claims it to further the story that the brain is developed that you're a body. <laughs> basically yeah a spiritual one or whatever one or a wise one or it's all going to be pictured as a body so uh yeah so my idea what i thought spiritual bypass was was taking the easy route but fooling yourself so you're saying you're awake but you're not you're still an asshole or shit like that. And there hasn't been enough change in the action figure to basically verify that you've shifted. Well, to me, that's a, a huge misunderstanding in a lot of ways. Yeah. If you're waiting 
for the 35 signs of awakening to demonstrate through your action figure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you may be waiting a while. You might as well just realize we're all awake. Like it or not. Yeah. <laughs> None of these things would ever happen without it. Yeah. The basis, the basis of our nature is awakeness. We can seem to be awake to that fact, or we can seem not to be awake to that fact, but it's a fact, yeah? Yeah. I hope that helped, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. There was a great, there's a great thing in The Course in Miracles where they talk about uh, this idea doesn't entail sacrifice, yeah? It's not a call to martyrdom for you to arrive at a, a, an exalted condition. I love that about it. It says there's no, love doesn't demand a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I hope that helped. I gotta go soon, the cops um, are coming. Ben has a question, uh, Paul? I think Muji called, uh, <laughs> Muji called the police on us. <laughs> well, Ben has a question. Go for it, Ben. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> hi, Paul. Um, this might be kind of a silly question, but uh, I'm wondering. <laughs> the screen is doing all kinds of crazy things. Um, what is identification? Where does it come from? How does it arise? Like on a really moment-to-moment -moment basis, is there any way to say? It's the uh, through the act of being identified as self. So. Uh, not a hearing, but a listening to the head without any knowledge about the mechanics of the head. The self thing that we're hearing all day is applying that we already are a self. So you don't even have an option to become or not become one. You are one. And yeah. the memories verify that you were one. And all the fucking worrying you're doing about you is sort of verifying you will be one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm the that's how it's going on yes it seems it seems like the head can be doing all that though and and there can be like a non-belief in that you know and that but there's something that happens where it's believed all that pointing and that referencing of a self suddenly gains this energy that's like really intense and alive you know um it's like you have a puppet on your finger and you believe it's really talking to you you know like why there's some shift the that seems to happen that, uh, what's going to change all that is lack of is loss of interest so mm. once you start really seeing and uh see this activity not being you can first be held on an intellectual level and it's not that deep you know it will drop because it's factual, it has some weight. And there'll be a, a real loss of interest in all of this activity that's used to reinforce the idea of you, yeah? Yeah. And of course, when that starts happening, it brings out the heavy guns and you know, like you're never gonna be loved or some other thing. And if you can withstand the barrage and don't act out too terribly, Fucking things really, really shift. Yes? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And so, and in a way, when it gets really, really loud, that's a good sign. Yeah? That's a good sign because then the system, instead of irritating you, is getting irritated, which is nice. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So... Everyone's moving into the sunlight as I freeze here in Marin. <laughs> it's okay. I'm like a mailman. Rain, snow, sleet. The message will be delivered. Yeah. They are. They've all abandoned me. Look at them. There's a few of them. Oh, man. That's, that's not right. They are. I'm going to switch around. I'm going to go around and have them turn around. All right, if there's no more questions, is there any more? No? I think Bev has a question. Who? 
Bev, do you have a question, Bev? Okay, if not, um, Arntor? Right, Arntor? Go ahead. All right. I think yeah, that was enough, enough, eh? Arthur has his hand up. He's had it up for a while. Well, yeah. For Go for it, Arthur. Hmm? I want to thank you for your message and, uh, and everything you say. It's been really helpful. I can't I've hear been you. watching you for, I think, uh, on and off since 2015. And I've been participating sometimes in these meetings, but not, you know, regularly. Sometimes I come in and I watch and I've just been listening and just taking it in. And definitely I felt some traveling lighter, but there's one thing that keeps bothering me. It's like this social anxiety thing that I can't, it just doesn't want to go away. And I ordered like a therapy session and I was wondering your thoughts about this. Is that just basically, you know, am I, am I making it stronger that, you know, the self thing or, you know, by doing that or because it doesn't seem to be going away. It doesn't, this social anxiety always when well, I do what you do, what you feel like you, this is more in the action figure realm. Yeah. Just follow through and, and maybe hold a, a sense of being in good hands. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Show up and see if uh, by sharing about it, you get a little lighter around that uh, heavy topic. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with uh, bailing out the, sh you know, the sinking rowboat. Yeah. So you don't <laughs> think it's like reinforcing the, the it pole. could be but it's probably not yeah i'm not saying the mechanicalness always completes its mission it was had a great success rate without us knowing it going on but now you know it goes on so you can see it yeah yeah, yeah. And, and take care of what the action figure needs yeah it's a little bit like you you keep talking about you know saving your ass instead of saving your face yes and i think when I get in this, these anxiety attacks, I, I think I'm trying to save some face. Something is trying to save a face, you know, when I meet people. It's, yes. not, it's, not, it's not like constant thing. It's not, it's in certain circles that I feel anxiety. Yes. And, and when the spotlight really comes on me, then, you know, I have to become somebody else. Well, you know, why don't you just take a look at it with the with the an assistance of someone else and see what gets revealed? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do these days. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm not ball. saying. Uh, I'll just yeah go go forward, my son. Yeah, yeah. I just needed your blessing. <laughs> and then if it doesn't work, or maybe it will work for a, a short time, and you can get off it. But yeah. You'll yeah, see yeah. it in a new light, and maybe that will help uh, some ventilation to come in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that's <laughs> my hope. That's my hope because this has been, you know, I've, I'm also part of the recovery community. I've been sober for five years, but this is the only thing that doesn't go away somehow. You know. Well, this is the beginning of your recovery. So now, yeah, these things that look like they're never going to go away will they change? I had a similar thing that used to occur only if when I was in a significant relationship, someone I really loved, I would have attack of a vague paranoia and really put my foot in my mouth, usually around holidays and uh, fucking really yeah. something else. And, and I was advancing on many fronts, but this seemed to be a real snag. And almost like I had given up, but in recovery, I learned something about step six and seven, where I saw it one night and I asked to have it reconfigured and it was, and it's never come back with any strength ever since. That's 22 years ago. But in those 11 years of being sober, dealing with it, I had lost a lot of hope that it was ever gonna change. So I was just gonna limit my affairs, you know? just yeah so but uh life had a bigger plan in store for me it's just you remember don't leave before the miracle and shit certain no, things no. some things take longer than others you know it's such a strange thing it keeps occurring you know when i least expect it it just pops up 
Yes. Fucks with my day. Fucks with everything. Well, I've had that big kind of fish, and it was sort of filleted and grilled, and yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. But I know this can't really harm me in any way. It it can't really do anything to me. It's like just an open threat. You know, you're gonna you're gonna look like an idiot if you say this. You're gonna. Yeah, but you know we're idiots already, so. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I realize. Yeah. 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 Then one one more thing before I leave. I'm having about, trouble hearing you, but yeah. About step six and seven and all that, you know, I know this is not the recovery portion. I know this is non-duality, but maybe I'm not trusting the process enough. Maybe that's why anxiety is coming. Well, maybe that. you're trusting that which is saying you're not trusting. That's why. That might be. Yeah, I would say that one. Go there. Okay. Step back another step. There's a, a large space behind you. Just see, there's a lot of faith in that thing that just said, I'm not trusting. Yeah. 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 Don't believe it. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Thank you very much. See, when someone says they don't have any faith, there's faith in that. Faith is a force that's sort of like gravity and shit. There's no way getting around it. It's, every, it's pushing everything into manifestation. Yeah. So when yeah. someone says... I have no faith. He has a huge amount of faith in that idea. Yeah? You can't yeah. get out from it. So just take it a step back. When something says, I'm not trusting, well, don't trust that. <laughs> really? <laughs> Basically, it wants to be suspicious about everything that comes after it. You can be for it. You're before it. So be suspicious of it. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, man. I got to say goodbye to everyone or I'm going to need uh, I can't hear a thing anymore. Thank, thank you. you. I'm happy you're here, bro. And thank you for taking this space up and sh- being a little vulnerable with it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Oh. That's a great sign. All right. Hey, Jim, I'm going to say goodbye. Okay. I'm going to move out in the sun here. <laughs> the phone, man. It got winter. It's winter <laughs> in San Francisco. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can still All hear right, you. Jim, thank you. You did a good job. I hope this worked out. And listen, guys, we're going to try to figure out another time for this talk, maybe a little earlier, not 1.30. So I'll talk with people on this Wednesday and, and uh, the Tuesdays and Thursday meetings, and we'll come to some conclusion because we're going to do these live meetings from now on, I think. All right, so Jim, thank you. John, no problem. as always. Uh, the the screen is icing up. I can't see. Can't see through it. <laughs> Paul. Robert, the Kiwi. Nice to see you, Robert. Glenda. Hey, Paul. Johannes. Matt. Nice to see you, Matt. Coming around. Appreciate it. We got, uh, oh, there's Matthias. Ah, good. That's that. He looks like he ate the, the uh, canary. I like that. We got Mike C. Linda. Joseph, Helen from North, Northern England, Phoenix, Phoenix has dropped in. Nice to see you, Phoenix, again. Anu, Stefan on having never left. Michael, uh, my, my greeter, Alex, nice to see you. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, we got Connor from Dublin, 100% Irish. I know that. Tariq from Dover, New Jersey. Nan formerly known as Nanette. Nice to see you. Vlad, hanging out in Portugal. I'm going to see you when we come, maybe, when we go to Italy. I'll talk to you about it. Roman, nice to see you again, as always. Mark, always a pleasure. Traveling well. Mickey. Hi, Paul. Thank hey. you. Terry, Terry looking very dashing there in Maine. Yeah. Oh, wait, we have Ben. Ben's here. Sonia, Christian, we got Chris from uh, Kentucky. Nice to see you, Chris. We got Bev, Keith from Idaho, Carl, Owen from Berlin, Kenneth, uh, wow, iPhone, Susanna W. Why aren't you here, Susanna? Dimitri, Linus, <laughs> Tanya. A lot of phone numbers, a lot goes here. All right, thank you, everyone. Hey.
Thanks, guys.